Ladies and gents, you're back in the LZ, and wow, god damn, it's been a long time. And uh, I have my friends here, Mr. Chris Redpunks, down here in the corner now. You can actually see him, and his face, his beautiful hairy face, is visible. Uh, and uh, you, you can more than just hear him now, I think that's great. Uh, so, uh, we're going to lead off today, and of course, can't forget about our, our awesome regular here on the show, Mr. Rum and Apples is on the show. Say mm. hi to the Apples. Ah. What am I doing here? Why was I taken? Where are my pants? You got your twenty dollars, all right. He did mention yes. before we started yes, the show that he oddly smelled like chloroform, and I want to say that I'm yeah. not responsible for that. I not gotta, I gotta not believe. That. Just saying, I don't believe you. <laughs> uh, so today we start off with our lead story. Uh, we'll talk about Destiny Two because it seems that lessons aren't being learned with Activision, and of course Bungie as well because there is some repeating shit that's happening from destiny one that's carrying over to destiny two and apparently oh, how between peculiar legacy how peculiar destiny, yeah. in destiny? And, and you know what wow. apparently apparently the lesson learned was not enough for them to write up a nice mia culpa for all the sales they lost uh and so they kept it going uh so uh, a story out of Game St uh, GameSpot that I want to read here, and uh, it goes as follow: an excerpt from the article that you can find in the comment or the uh, the, the description below. Uh, an excerpt that says, "As was the case with the Dark Below DLC for the original Destiny, Bungie has effectively locked Destiny 2 owners out of some activities they previously had access to if they have not purchased the Curse of Osiris DLC, the first DLC expansion for Destiny uh, Destiny 2. The expansion launched." earlier this week and among many other things increased the level and power level caps resulting in a corresponding increase <laughs> to level requirements for select modes as a result <laughs> I can't even keep, I can't even read. Uh, as a result, those who have not purchased Curse of Osiris suddenly find themselves unable to take part in things they could play just a few days ago. Oh my god. Can we kill, kill, for real, <sighs> gamers, gamers, what is with this battered gamer syndrome shit that is in your fucking heads? Stop it. What are you, everybody, everybody out the gate. When, when people came back from looking at Destiny 2, what did everybody say? Oh, it looks like Destiny 1.5. I have to That's say, exactly what we got. I have to say, I am part of the problem too because, oh, and here's the thing, you are. they did this shit exactly with Destiny 1, and here's what they did, and you know, because after the, the game's life cycle was over, uh, I decided to play it again. I'm like, oh, let's see what's going on with Destiny. Now, mind you, I was one of those mm -hmm. water-headed pricks that decided to purchase Destiny. And then, here comes the the next Destiny edition for a full $60. So it had the Taken King and everything as part of it. Yes. So there was another $60 that I dropped on it. No, you didn't double dip another, like that, did I you? double dipped because <gasps> you had to buy it. No. In order, oh, in, in, no, in, because didn't. that old version was not, so you had to buy the Taken King, right? Or yeah. the the expansion for Taken King actually apparently had like a forty dollar price tag or something. I can't remember. I just know that it 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 basically required that I buy the Taken King edition of Destiny. So I did yes. that. I didn't play it for like a year or more after. Like it was a game that could not retain my excitement for whatever reason. So. It, it, it's it's not that great a game. I mean, I I thought the art was great, but there was no single player campaign that was really a hook for me. And I, I like having a total package, but I went to go put it in, and this was after the final DS DLC at launch. I was like, okay, I'm feeling like some Destiny multiplayer. I put it in. You can't access multiplayer. There's no <laughs> there's they they have it locked behind a paywall because I did not buy the final DLC. I bought everything before it. What was it? Uh, something wolves or something? I forget the name of it. Uh, but because I didn't buy that because I or it was Rise of Iron. I can't remember which one it was. But because I didn't buy that single last DLC, I was locked out of actual team based multiplayer. I could still play uh, just. You know your your uh, one on one, and not your one on one, but your uh, your death match. Not team death match, but yeah. You know that that's that's very niche. Not not a lot of people like de death match, right? 
so I, I basically limited. They have basically partitioned off modes because I didn't buy. And of course, their excuse, and it's just like we're using here, it's it, it's because of level cap raising. That's their. But that that's doesn't their make any sense. That's a bad excuse. Cedric, we we played Destiny Two for a little bit, right? I have it. I own um, it. What for what, a little bit, but then it became super grindy and tedi like tedious as always. Like uh, it just became the same thing all over again. Like you do all the main missions. The story mode was more fleshed out. Actually, was a story mode this time, but once you finish the story mode, there's nothing else to do. It just drags so out. Well, so once again, we, we come full circle into the major problem with a lot of AAA releases. It comes down to a game with a over -serializ well, a franchise which will lead into an over-serialization problem that's just an incremental upgrade mm -hmm. of gameplay. It's not much else. And and what it's doing is it's creating a revenue column just to sap out gamers' money out their back ass, their back pocket. It's the same thing they do like with Madden every year. Like, yeah, now you could uh, have better yeah. catching mechanics and yeah, buy it. <laughs> Yes, yeah, buy the jig, look at the ankle biting mechanics in NBA 2K25. <laughs> the ankle biting. Steph Curry is splashing. You pay, pay in Twitch for cheer bits. You see little water emojis fly off the screen. <laughs> Fuck, man. Nice. I mean, look, if we if we get back onto what, what the biggest problem with Destiny 2 is, it is a sequel that's really not even anywhere. Why did you, why did we buy it? Why did we even invest any interest? Because it's not a good sequel. That's really what it comes down to. It's a sequel that that contained the same errors from the first game, and if anything, they're being more flagrant about it, and they seem to give a fuck less. Mm -hmm. Well, the game does look better visually. That support 4K, which is good. That's true. Um, that is true. There's new locales, which are cool, but then you're fighting the same enemies from the last game. The same exact enemies. There's no new enemies at it. Well, how much bullet sponge can you really deal with at a certain point? Can I get a different uh, target to shoot at? It could, it, does yeah. it always have to be the black mugger I shoot on a shooting range? Can I get somebody <laughs> else here? What's going on here? I love it. He goes, can I get somebody <laughs> else except the black <laughs> It's the same thing over and over and over and over. It just becomes so tedious. It's kind of like uh, the issue they have with the division. Like you're shooting these random thugs running around wearing parkas the whole time. There's no variation in it. It gets boring as fuck. That's why the Taken King was decent, at least, because it added some changes to the game. So at this point, with you guys being people who have had a way more experience with Destiny 2 than I have, I mean, at this point, what can Destiny 2 really do to have a, a good turnaround? Because, unfortunately, we're probably going to see a Destiny 3. Eventually. What's going to happen need to happen for Destiny 3, which sucks even saying it, has had to be some amazing DLC. Because... <laughs> yeah, no! <laughs> Because the the first game, it was garbage to me. Until they released the Taken King, which added a, a great narrative line for the game, which had a whole bunch of quests that were actually really, really, really like thick in lore that I didn't even know existed. And then the mm -hmm. boss battles actually had like stakes in the game. You actually had something invested in the fights you were going through, which I liked. Instead of hearing like Peter Dinklage's voice just like telling me quips <laughs> while I'm shooting at fucking like this troll in the cave or some shit. Uh, oh, it is. Because this is just after uh, Destiny 2 was in trouble for being caught manipulating internally the, the XP, the leveling yeah. and the XP that they were doing. So they had some internal throttling of XP going on, uh, and then it took somebody diving into it to see that it was happening. And of course, yeah. here comes the bashful and the, oh, shit, you caught me. Uh, <laughs> apology right after, like, like as if I would have gotten away with it if you kids hadn't caught me, type of thing. And, and you got the Scooby too. Doo villain yeah. excuse. Yeah, I yeah. would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you meddling kids. Right. It's like, oh, Professor Destiny. <laughs> like, and you know, and and just after, because I was discussing this on Reset Era with a bunch of folks, and you know, somebody posted a video that Danny O'Dwyer did when he was with Gamespot. Uh, before he left and started doing no clip, and he literally did a piece on Destiny One about how he didn't approve how they were doing the philosophy of things, like how they were literally instituting like like deep behavioral research on how they were getting you to to do these these things is like an addictive thing to to say, okay, yeah, I I want to play more Destiny, and it comes down to 
ra sort of randomizing the rewards and the feedback that you get for the things that you do and leaving it to where you can't fully expect what is going to happen. And of course, I can leave that down in the description. Uh, but it's like, it, it, it makes a point that now we're, we're, we're in such a behavior trend with gaming now that it's, we're, we're mobile games now. This is this is what it is. It's it's the carrot at the end of the stick versus just caring about the integrity of the sixty dollar product that you got. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's it's very telling. And I've made this analogy before, and people got really pissed at me, but I don't fucking care. The battered gamer syndrome thing got me in enough trouble. <laughs> but, <laughs> battered but, gamer syndrome, dude. That... I have dubbed a new psychological like defect in gamers it's called battered gamer syndrome it's when gamers have came to a point where the AAA companies abuse destroy them they do whatever they want to them and pull whatever type of money they want and yet gamers still buy the same fucking games and all they do is go online and social media services and bitch about it they never take a stance they never come together there's no boycott there's no nothing there's no grassroots movements there's nothing we have a situation where gaming as gamers on a consumer level is, in a, is, is, is frustrated. And we're really frustrated because gaming has, modern gaming and AAA scenes, have come to a point of, we're, and Legacy, you hit the nail on the head. We've moved into a mobile service style gaming. Every person, every gamer right now has essentially become that joke that South Park made about freemium games. It has really come that far. When South Park did an entire episode on how freemium is fuckery and everybody buys into it and how all these people get fucking bloated into the bullshit. And they get they get preconditioned into doing these things. I mean, what fucking sense does it make when we have loot boxes to play dress up avatars? Oh, I want to look like this Barbie doll. Let me look like this Barbie doll. Now I want to look like Ninja Gaiden Barbie doll. Oh, I better buy a loot box. I mean, it's fucking bullshit. You and you I know get this it, at least it, at least with the cosmetics, you know, at least it, okay. It, it's one thing that you can be submissive in the idea that you know the publishers are just they're just going to do this right they're going to find some way to to add a monetization to their product that is aside from the $60 base price you know it. I, I they've been that. they've been oh, trying course. they've been trying to do it for years ever since you ever since we started plugging ethernets into our consoles mm -hmm. it, it it was how can we make more money from this right xbox live subscriptions <laughs> happened then your horse armors happened, your your <laughs> map packs happened, right? And now... Yeah, Acceler accelerant packs, etc., much of the like. Yeah, yes, now absolutely. we're into in-app purchases and, and, and things like that. Now, it, 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 it's, it's unfortunate because, just like you said, the battered gamer syndrome, I kind of think that's funny, and it's true. It's true. It, it's harshly true because, just like I said, I'm part of the problem... I bought Destiny, mm -hmm. taking their word for it, that they yep. were like, "Yes, we learned, we learned lessons about how we were going to do things from the first Destiny." And, and what that, did I tell you, Legacy? What did and, I say? And, and uh, not me, publicly, hook, on, everybody. Line, hook, line, and yeah. sinker every single time, and it's unfortunate. And you, you should, you should learn to expect as much. Not from Bungie, but from Activision. Like, and and this and Bungie's not innocent in this either, right? This, this is this is the ten year contract, the ten year plan they put together with Activision. They they were set. They knew what they they knew what they were climbing into bed here with. Yeah, and yeah, it's, it's you, unfortunate you, circumstance. And and you can't help but but think, okay, you know, I I'm cool with monetization to a point. And you've heard me praise games like. Rainbow oh, Six we've gotten Siege, into debates. and and you know I'm not inherently against microtransactions. At the very this is where we the, differ, the, the and you know what? Well, I, it depends on how it's done, though, because you look at games like you have games that like uh, Overwatch, for example. They have microtransactions through their chest, but you can also earn them through the natural progression in the game by playing longer. So it's not like they're like twisting your arm to get a, a chest, like. Uh, some other games we'll discuss later, but uh, it's an option. There's it's that dopamine. There's that dopamine kick. They're 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 catching after though. They're they're chasing after it because it's it's like okay, you can like for instance, Halo Five was the big one for me. We've discussed Halo Five at length here on the show, and yes. it's like 
you know, I became addicted to that system. Like, even so much so that I even gave it money. Because, for one, the number one thing that I draw the line on is splitting player bases. Like, if you're monetizing your game but everybody plays, I find that a middle ground. I don't find that a good thing. I just find it a good middle ground, right? Because, and I think Rainbow Siege, Rainbow Six Siege does this best. I haven't had to give Rainbow Six Siege any money other than the first season pass that I got it. Because with my regular play, I was able to buy everything that was capable of, of being unlocked in the game through through time. It's not a great, it's not a perfect thing, but I have not once ever said, well, I can't play with my friends with this map or this map or this character because they don't own this DLC or I don't own this DLC. Hmm. But now we're going in the complete opposite direction now. We are locking players out of content that they had access to from the base Mm -hmm. product. From the $60 product that they bought originally, we're locking them out of that stuff now, which is what pissed me off. I had a tantrum on Twitter when I tried to play uh, the first Destiny again and lost my shit because I couldn't play the the base game that I had bought and people and the weird part is is that here came the defense force on this one because I got dogpiled on Twitter when I had my tantrum about for the first destiny when I tried to play it again after uh after the last content had come out and well well it's like it's like an MMO it is was the first thing when I was like okay first off that's bullshit because even even Bungie has said they don't want to be considered an MMO. They are games of service. Those two aren't the well, same thing. They're doing they're doing the very terrible job at defining the difference. It's you either you you got to be one or the other. This gray area thing is causing problems, right? It's causing well, a big deal. And the, okay, so that I that, that argument was not a prevalent one, but the one that mm-hmm. I that I got really hit with, well, you should you should just stop sounding so goddamn entitled. What do you mean to the thing that I what? spent sixty dollars on? <laughs> Wait, what? The thing I already own. I purchased a copy. I bought it. I gave you my money as as my as my um incentive, as of of this is me supporting you. The fuck, dude? I get, dude. That's ridiculous. No, I no, no. Can, that, that's ridiculous. That's that's ridiculous because if you no, 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 no. Entitled my ass. No, yeah. this is simply this is a dissatisfied customer. That's all it is. When it's you, a dissatisfied customer with a subpar product. Yeah, when you give me something and then you take it away after I already gave you money for it, you if goddamn you right I'm going to sound. Fucking, if you jizz in my fucking cheeseburger and tell me it's mayonnaise, I'm going to complain, you fuck. And you I'm going to be entitled to a new burger, it. jizz free. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> entitled my That's fucking chick dick. That's how this works. Dick. And see, nothing, nothing drives me more crazy about this industry then just like what you said, a, 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 a group of customers that don't take their, their industry seriously enough to be able to call this shit out, but rather they go and defend it because they love the thing that you're going after. Like, well, it's it, a bias. It's, it's a it's weird bias. It's not like you said, though. It's like the battered uh, gamer syndrome. You're like, uh, yeah, he yeah. hits me, but, you know, he loves me, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I love yeah, it's, him. It's the truth. It's the <laughs> truth. It's battered gamer syndrome. It all correlates back to it. It's 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 gamers have been abused for so long. They become apologetic for the treatment almost. And now they even they even um they even justify it to a certain extent. And I put this in the chat earlier and I can't think of any other better way to say this. Destiny 2 is like bad sex with a really hot girl. Cuz that's what it is. Destiny 2 looks great. And, you know, I'm this, smelling that. I want to get in there. The second you get in there and that shit spread eagle and you're finagling around, you go, oh, no. This and Boeing it, it, 747 smells, feels small when I'm landing it in a head the size I of a ch- Grand Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> Grand Canyon. Destiny just- 2. No, Destiny 2 is a stretched apart fuck, fuck piece of Destiny 1. It is a game designed to fuck player bases. And it, it accomplishes it brilliantly. It, it, well, it, see the thing it's and when I think about it, the first one and the second one were not even that great. And here and this is kind of where I'm going to sound a little bitchy about it because 
I'm so used to playing shooters at 60 frames per second, and this doesn't even accomplish mm. that. And now, not only is it a kind of a slog to play, but it, it doesn't feel good to play because the frame rate's capped at 30, and all the stuff happening with it being a, it, it tries to be a twitch shooter with without allowing you the twitch to be able to do it right and so now i feel like everything is so floaty and cumbersome because of the frame rate that i can't even get behind well, the mechanics it was, it was it. the same way in the first game it was it was the exact same which is the another yeah, reason the same thing yeah it, it was another reason why i put it down for so long and i had no desire to play it because it wasn't having much fun but then it, that was the that was the danger of the moment. I was like, you know what? I feel like playing something from Bungie, right? And you know, because I I do love Bungie games. I've always liked Halo. I've always loved Halo. I can't bitch too much because Halo was in 30 frames back in the day. It, it was what it was then. It is what it is now. But That's a back in the day though. That's yeah. not today. Mm -hmm. That wasn't it's a debate we were having back then. We weren't debating frame rates back That's then. That's true. Well, because we didn't even have an option at that point. Nothing was I mean, in we were, 60 frames we hardly. That we were just amazed that plasma grenades still existed. We were right. just like, oh shit. <laughs> Executions? Oh, I love this. It That's was what we were a, thinking of. It was amazing. Our that, dicks were hard for different it, things. It, it was amazing that a 60 <laughs> frame percent... For, it was amazing... <laughs> <laughs> they They are. And, they, and, they really are. And you know what? They it, it, they weren't hard for multiplayer shooters for me back then anyway. No, um, no, you know, but no. and, and I think I made the mistake of getting into those, but now it's like we're being fully taken advantage of and saying and, it, and you know what? You can try to bullshit us with this 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 type of talk of well, the level caps had to be raised and that was a good thing we did. It's all insignificant. That is the reality. Is, is it, that's literally the yeah, reality. It's insignificant. Of it. Well, it, it's 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 it comes to a point where if you look at what Destiny Two is, it's Destiny One Point Five. It is the jackass DVD that they release in between movies. There's mm -hmm. nothing here that you want to hold on to for a sixty dollar price point. I mean, I I as a as a gamer, someone who plays video games, and I and I play I played Destiny. I played the first one that came out. I played it with my former boss. You know, he was and. Dude, it's and I play. I played the second one. I played a little bit of it. I don't think I've thrown a game back quicker to GameStop. I don't think I have. There's no fucking point. I mean, I went. Oh, okay. So it's Destiny One with shaders that cost. <laughs> okay, now now I'm now I'm really bored. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what do I do now? Okay, so I go do raids. Okay, so the PvP. Well, it's all the same. Why is everything like a sponge still? I do what have to it, say. What, I, I do have to say. I I do like the single yes, player so far. The campaign has been pretty good. I, I can't complain about that. I will I'll know give why them, you think I'll that? give them credit where it is due because they finally got to put the art department to work full Bungie style, which is always something I've always loved about Bungie is they know how to craft a single player campaign. Great art, great direction, great action, great moment to moment pacing. They do good at that and Bungie The single player campaign was not that great and the villain was trash. The, I haven't finished it. I haven't finished it. So you're I've seen I'm about I'm about Four hours in, I think. You're Don't let it influence same, you're you. You're fighting all the same enemies from the first game. And then... Oh, it's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> now, see, that's problematic. It's just, and it, then it's super now, how the hell short, did you... too. Just... Well, Crystal Red Punks, please. I'm sorry to cut you off. I know, I know, I know you're going to go back into it. But at that point, I mean, when did you start... Well, let, well, let me get your thoughts on the campaign. I know this is your show legacy, but I think it's, I think it's pivotal here. I mean, what was Red Punk's thoughts on the campaign from start to finish? Because clearly you completed it, and it sounded like it was dragging you through th fucking hot coils. The campaign was passable. Okay. And it's passable because in the past, you had no campaign. That's why it's similar to, like, uh, Battlefront 2. The campaign's four fucking hours. But people were happy. Oh, God, we got a campaign. Thank God. Back in the day, you get a campaign for, like, Modern Warfare 1. is like, fucking eight to ten hours or something like that. Absolutely. But now you get a shit bag campaign and you're just happy you got it because once again you're a battered game you're like oh well you know the roses are dead but at least you bought them like what who, who the fuck cares it's still garbage and then the he villain is just like me. the villain <laughs> <laughs> the villain is just so so trash a major character from the lore gets killed in the game he doesn't have like a real like death he just like dies off screen or oh, you get soft kill? the Final you Fantasy die? 15 syndrome. You die? He dies, you don't realize he's dead. You're like, wait, he died? Oh. 
What? Well, that's oh, bullshit. That, is, that that's did happen. Bogus. That did happen. It's like it's like Glenn dying in a Walking Dead, but it happens off screen. Spoiler like, alert. <laughs> You know what? It's okay. If you're gonna kill the Asian, you kill him off screen. Okay. Fresh Aww. off the boat on TV. ABC's got some good sitcoms. They're making money. You know, let the shank die off screen. It's all good. It's all good. He had a hot girlfriend. He had a hot girlfriend. He Netflix and chilled. How do you Netflix and chill in The Walking Dead? Totally different subject. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> You, uh, hey baby, hey it's baby, a puppet show. My gas power it's generator. <laughs> <laughs> you can see Rick with puppets it's a on his hands. Puppet show. No, he's got a sock puppet on his dick. It's an elephant. Oh god. And and oh, no. so so lastly, I kind of what I kind of find funny is that yes, when sir. when we found him out on the XP throttling that they were doing, yes. yeah. it was a full on apology we're gonna fix it we don't like it either even though y'all put the shit in the game and launched it that way mm -hmm. when this happens and people are gated off and are totally walled off behind a paywall because let's be honest your whole level cap bs okay that's cool that you did that but that you're using that as a reasoning as why you did that not kosher not kosher well, it's from not even walling people it's off well, it's not a good reason. What it is, it's it's a it sounds like a corporate excuse. There you it go. It sounds like somebody it sounds like somebody said, Oh shit, they're pissed. What do we do? And somebody goes, Oh, why don't we tell them this? Just, just tell them this. It'll 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 quell keep it them positive. for a while. Okay, keep it positive. Yeah. Positive spin. So uh yeah, Destiny two, uh in constant trouble. Not not mon not monetarily it seems, but of course, Maybe people will learn their goddamn lesson by by doing this again. Uh, I I really hope so.